Hello, my name is Brandon Preeti. This is my video book report on Charles Spurgeon's Soul Winner. So, I thought it would only be appropriate to record this wearing Charles Spurgeon shirt with a quote from his lectures to my students. So, with the shirt on, I'm ready to tackle this book report. So, a little bit of background information on Charles Spurgeon. He was a 19th century preacher in London preached at the Metropolitan Tabernacle from 1854 to 1892. Uh, while there, he founded a pastor's college and orphanage and a plethora of other ministries. Um, he was first and foremost a minister of the gospel and was ardently concerned about the lost. If you hear crying, uh, my daughter is a week old, so she gets a little upset sometimes which is why I'm wearing these headphones, so hopefully you don't hear her, but if you do, that's why. So, anyway, Charles Spurgeon was involved in something called the downgrade controversy in London. Uh, basically, it was viewed as a war on liberalism infiltrating the church. Uh, he involved himself for a couple of reasons. One was to warn the church about the dangers of li liberalism entering the church. And the second was to clear his conscience um, after being able to address the downgrade controversy, he wanted to be able to rid himself of that to focus on his ministry without any hindrance. So that's why he got involved there. But um, anyway, now we can get to the actual book, Soul Winner. So Soul Winner is a book that actually isn't a book. It's a collection of lectures that Charles Spurgeon delivered to a various number of audiences. Um, so the breakdown is... Uh, the first six chapters, Charles Spurgeon is addressing his students at the pastor's college that he founded um, and teaching them what it is to win souls. And then uh, 7 through 10 is Charles Spurgeon addressing Sunday school teachers, open air preachers, and lay leaders, um, teaching them about soul winning at the Monday night prayer meetings that Spurgeon held at the Metropolitan. And then um, the last chunk of the book, chapters 11 through 15, are sermons that he delivered on the topic of soul winning at Metropolitan Tabernacle. So the book starts with Charles Spurgeon asking the question, what it is to win souls? Um, and he answers in the negative at first saying what it isn't, and then moves to answering what it is. And so he outlines a bunch of different points. Uh, he, he mentions things like teaching that um, it is our duty as the Lord's instruments to make known the truth to men and that we have to seek them and teach them the truth. Uh, he also talks about how it's not only about teaching men but it's also about impressing the truth upon men, making them feel it rather than just hear it and believe it. Um, and then he, he also talks a lot about repentance, regeneration by the Holy Spirit he says that um, a far greater work than what we can do must be present if we are going to win souls, and that would be the work of the Holy Spirit in regeneration. Um, he says that a work must be done before man is saved. A wonder of divine grace must be worked upon the soul. Nothing short of this can meet the case. They must be born from above. So throughout this whole book, um, he really balances the the human responsibility of soul winning with the divine work of grace of the Holy Spirit in soul winning and that um, without that our words would be empty and we ourselves cannot win a soul it is only by grace uh, provided by God through us the instruments of the Lord that win souls so uh, from there he moves on to discuss different Godward qualities that a soul winner must have um, for example, he talks about how soul winners must be holy before the Lord, as God only sees it fit to utilize instruments that reflect his character of holiness, and um, that he wouldn't use unclean instruments. He also goes on to talk about uh, manward qualities for soul winners, how we should engage with uh, each other that would make um, soul winning attractive, how we can better our witness to people outside of the church. Um, so from that standpoint, the book is really good. It's very practical. 
Charles Spurgeon has a, a great way of making deep theological and scriptural truths easy for people to understand. As long as you can understand 19th century English, or you can get an abridged version and they translate it all for you. Um, so a couple of things with the book. It is a little hard to follow just because of the audience shift. Sometimes you get the same topic under the subject of soul winning repeated. Um, he covers manward qualities, I think it's manward qualities, twice. Um, once with his students in the lectures at the college, and then once with the Sunday school teachers in the meetings on Monday that he was teaching about soul winning. So sometimes you get a little bit of uh, topic double duty in the book just because it was it was different audiences, so they hadn't heard it before. So to them it wasn't repeated information, but when you've got it in a book, um, you end up reading a couple of things twice, which isn't bad because it helps you retain it uh, a little better, but it does make it a little hard to, to follow at times. Um, and then when I was reading it, you almost get a sense, or I did anyway, that Charles Spurgeon is elevating the work of, evan of, of evangelist or the office of evangelist above any other Christian gift or office. And I don't think that was his intention. Um, but as I was reading it, I was um, reminded of a quote that is attributed to him. It's from, a, it's from his uh, Sword and Trowel, um, where he's, he made a statement that every Christian is either a missionary or they're an imposter, which I don't necessarily agree with. Um, I like Charles Spurgeon a lot, but unfortunately there's a couple of things that I just... Nope. Um, so I think the point he's trying to get across, uh, very poorly worded, is that um, every Christian should be involved in the work of missions. We should all be um, working to fulfill the Great Commission. We should be concerned with the lost, and we should be trying to reach the lost. Um, every Christian should have a missional mindset, but not every, not every Christian is called to be an evangelist, and not every Christian is called to be a missionary. Um, and I think that is kind of where statements like that um, missionary or imposter kind of air. Um, and you get that a little bit in this book. He says that um, he says that soul winning is or should be, I think he says soul winning should be the goal of every true believer. And I wholeheartedly agree. I think Christians should be dedicated to winning souls. Um, but I also believe that the chief end of the Christian is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Um, and while evangelism and winning souls is part of that, I would not see that as man's chief end, and certainly not the Christian's chief end. Um, we are to be expanding the kingdom through evangelism, as was given to us at the Great Commission by Jesus. Um, but I, I just think that Charles Spurgeon may have elevated um, the office of, of evangelist a little higher than than needed. Um, but overall, really good book. Um, like I said before, it's really pra very practical, um, very comprehensible. Um, I definitely would recommend it to people that are involved in any ministry aspect, Sunday school, um, small group leaders, pastors, because that's the people that these lectures were originally addressed to. So that is my report on Soul Winner. It's a good book. I'll definitely read it again. Um, all right. See you guys later.